Did you think there's no way creating AI agents can be easier? Or how do we even operate multiple agent crews together? Well, Crew AI came out with that answer using CLI commands and flow. This amazing update answers these questions. So in today's video, we're gonna go over these updates, what they are and how to use them. These will upgrade your crew. All right, well, first let's actually go over what was updated. So they have a new flow feature, which I have covered in one of my series videos. They have a flow visualizer, they have two different CLI commands for creating a flow and creating your own tool. They have Git validations. They have a fix for JSON encoding date objects. They have new documentation. And then there's just some updates to the readme, then various bug fixes. Okay, we're not gonna go over all of these, but let's start at the docs. Probably the first thing you'll see with the docs is that it has been revamped. It looks better, it's more organized and you can come in here and they've actually updated a lot of the documentation as well for the recent updates. And the main one that we're going to go over briefly is the flow. So under core concept, this is a brand new feature called flows. And I have to be honest, this is really powerful. So let's go through a little bit of this and then we'll look at some other examples and how this works. And now what we're used to doing is creating a crew, you kick it off and it goes through all the agents and it outputs whatever, or whatever the logic is in between, it takes care of that. Or you can have multiple crews and takes care of all that stuff for you. Well, the thing with flows and what makes it really nice is that it simplifies the creation of everything for you. So instead of just having a crew, you actually have a flow and you can have multiple crews inside of there. Or if you just want a simple Python function, you can do that as well. And it can take care of how they are working together inside of it. Also allows for state management, which we'll go over. So let's go over the first example for a flow. The first thing is you have to import the flow and there's a listen and a start decorator. So if we create a class called example flow, and then you input or you give it a flow class inside of this, right? So now it knows that this is going to be a flow. And then we have this function called generate city, which all this is, is it's a call to open AI, gives you back a random city. And then we have this function called generate fun fact, which all it does is it takes in a random city, goes to open AI again, and gives a gets a fact about that city. And that's it, okay? This is a simple flow, but the difference is there's these decorators, the at start and the at listen. The at start means in this flow, whenever you run this, right, you can have tens, hundreds, I don't care how many functions you have in here, but the start one, anything with the start means we're gonna start the flow at this function. So we're gonna start the flow here, it's gonna call open AI, and it's gonna return some random city. Now this at listen function, this is where we you know, kinda need to pay attention because this is the imp really important one, is this at listen function, we're giving it a generate city, which generate city is the name of the function up here. So whenever generate city is completed, whenever it has its completion and it returns the output here, the random city, it's listening, this function generate fun fact is listening for that. And whenever that's done, it says, okay, that's done. Now we're gonna take the, take the output of that one and bring it in to the input of this function. And then we're gonna take that city, give it back to OpenAI, and then return a fun fact. And then what we can do, now that there's only two Python functions, right? We don't have a crew just yet, but we'll get to there. So we call, so we start out with this main function. We instantiate the example flow, which is the class that we just saw. Then we say flow.kickoff, which is similar to the crew.kickoff, except now this is a flow. Then we just print out the generated fun fact. Let's run this really quick. Okay. All right, so I just copied the code into this crew AI updates file and I ran it. So there was the printout statement for starting the flow. It returned the random city, which this time was Tokyo. And then it gave that city into the next function, which was the generating the fun fact function. It says a fun fact about Tokyo is, you know, everything that's saying right here. Now, there are a couple of different ways to handle state. I'm just going to show you one of them. And this is kind of, this is the state that I like, that I would like to use as more of a structured state. Okay. so. This is sim very similar to what we just went over, right? But the difference is you see we have a pydantic class called example state. That's two properties, counter and message. One is an int, one is a string. That doesn't really matter. But when we call, when we create the class for state example flow, then we pass in the flow. This is the flow class pi being passed in as a parameter. Now this is gonna be a flow, right? But then in the brackets, we see example state. So this flow is now, going to have this pydantic class, which we can then operate with, with inside of this whole workflow. And this is going to be like the state, right? So we can handle, we can do things with the counter and message throughout the whole workflow. Say you have 50 agents, right? Or 50 different functions. Well, you can 
each method can do something with that state because it's being updated within this flow. For instance, we had the start method again. So this one's gonna be called first and it's gonna make the method, the message, sorry, the message property of the example state. It's gonna say hello from first method. Then it's gonna update the counter to be one. Then the second method is called because that is now over. Now it's going to add on to the message, the plus equals, the dash updated by second method, and it's going to increment the counter again by one. So now it'll be two. So now the second method, the last one is returning the self.state.message, which is the last output. So the final output should be hello from first method dash updated by second method. And then it's going to print out the final state, right? So you just say flow dot state, and it's really printing out the properties from this class. So then if we come up here to the output, the final output, you know, hello from first method, updated by a second method, then the final state where the counter is two, you know, it was incremented once each method, and then the met, then we already know what this string message is gonna say. And that is how state is managed. There is also unstructured state, which I'm not really gonna go over, but you don't actually need to give it a class. You can handle this within the functions and it understands whenever you add properties and then update them. Now, one thing I wanna show you is one thing you might be asking is, okay, there's a start and a listen decorator, but is that it? No, you can have many different at listen decorators. In this example, this is really the same example, but there's a second at listen decorator, right? So in the first method, the start one, it just has the message this time. In the second method, it's there's an at listen for the first method, their first function to be uh, finished. So the first method is what's called up here. Once that's done, it moves on to the second method. Well, then it updates the counter then it says the message, it concatenates it with the dash updated. Now you have another listener that's waiting for the second method. So this is the name of this function, second method. So whenever that's done, then the third method is going to start. So it increments the counter again, and then it just says dash updated again. So the output for there would be very similar. Still counter is going to be two, but it's gonna say hello from unstructured flow dash updated, dash updated again. Now that's great and all, but I haven't showed you, you're like, maybe, well, what about the cruise, right? How do we add cruise in here? Well, how we do that is we have another example here where this is about poems, right? So there's a poem flow. We give it the flow. We give it the state class here so we can handle sentence count and poem properties. We had the first method, which is the generate sentence count because we know that because it's where everything's gonna start by the start decorator. The next, the next, function generate poem is going to be listening to the generate sentence count function to be done. Once that's done, this starts. Now they in, they created a poem crew and inside of here, we do the kickoff, right? This is what we're used to seeing. This is how you kick off a crew, like typically in just a regular Python function. But in here, we're kicking off a crew inside of a function, right? And this function is waiting for the first one to be done, and then we kick off this crew. Then the third function, the save poem, is waiting for the whole crew to generate the poem. And then this one is going to save that poem to a file. And then everything else is the same. We know we instantiate the poem flow class, and then we kick off the flow but on the second function, we're actually using a whole crew to deal with generating the poem. And that could be 10 different agents. It could be one, could be five, could be 25. Well, however many that is, it doesn't matter because this poem crew is a separate, could be a separate file. And then that's getting kicked off here. Now, as we saw before, there's a crew AI create flow. So let's actually try this in our own project. So here I'm gonna say crew AI create flow poem. And I'm gonna run this inside of the crew AI series right here. And it's gonna have all the scaffolding, all the project structure. So it says cre it created the flow poem, it was successful. So if we open up the folder structure here, you know, there are some things here that are default, right? Like the environment variable, the, the TOML file, get ignore. But then if we open up the source, we have different crews here, right? So here in the crews, we have a poem crew Right here, this whole poem crew, let me, let me lower this. This whole poem crew is like what we've done before, right? If you created a just a crew, crew AI, create, then you create the crew with a name. That's basically, basically what this is. You know, we have an agent, a task, and then we instantiate the crew, right? With, the, all, with all the agent config, configuration, the task configuration and everything. That's all taken care of here. So if you go to the main Python file, this is essentially what we saw 
and what we just looked at. So we have the at start function that generates the sentence count. Then we have the, well, the first at listener, which is waiting for that to be done. Then it generates a poem. And then you have the third, the third function, which is another at listen. And then it's going to save that poem inside of our project directory. And then we run the flow, but this poem crew is going to be kicked off within this generate poem function as part of the flow. Okay, now in order to run this flow, you need to be in the source folder up here. Okay, so go to poem and then source. That's where I'm at. And then I'm simply just going to run the flow with their command. And that is crew AI flow run. And this is just printing out the state before the poem, right? So the next thing it's going to do is go to the second function and then it's going to kick off the whole crew, which will create the poem. It wrote a poem about how crew AI is awesome. And then it saved the poem. And then it's just printing out the state before and after saving the poem, which actually I think it's the same. But here is the poem.txt that was created from the last function after it created the poem. And two more things really quick that I want to show you with this update is there is the conditional logic. There's or and there's and conditional logic. Basically, what you can do is you see how there's this at listen right here, right? Then there's the or with the underscore. What this is saying is for this logger function, in order for it to run, either the start method can finish or the second method function. These are the function names can finish. So either the start method finishes or the second method finishes. Then there's also the same thing for and, right? So we have the same, basically the same code uh, for this logger function. It says and underscore, and inside of the parentheses, you have the start method and the second method, which are the names of the functions up here. So if the start method and the second method are done, then it's going to print out the logger and the state of the state of this flow. So you have the or and the and, which I do have examples of in day five of the crew AI series, which I did all last week that goes a little bit, something a little bit more in depth about this and a little bit more complicated. And the last thing I want to show you is you can actually plot your flow. And there are two ways to do this. And I'll, I'm just going to see the output of what the flow is. And I'll just explain how to do it. And then we'll see what it actually is. But this is, this is really nice and kind of gives you an idea of really how your flow is working. So either we have one line of one line of code, uh, you can say whatever your flow is called. So in ours, it was called poem flow. So we would say poem flow dot plot, and then just give the name of this. And it just it gives out an HTML file, which then we can see the flow. Or what we're going to do is you're going to say crew AI flow plot. And it's actually going to plot this for you and then generate the HTML file. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go back to let's go back to cursor. Let's open up the let's open up the terminal again. Let's clear this. And then I'm still inside the source file. So let's go ahead and run crew AI flow plot. And here is a visualization or plot of what our flow is actually doing. So you can easily see what I'm doing here without actually knowing any of the code, right? So the first thing I'm doing is generating a sentence count. So it was a random integer between one and five. And this is where it starts, right? Down here is a legend. So you can see what each everything means. And then once that is done, then we go down to the generate poem. And this is an actual crew method, right? Meaning inside of this method, we're kicking off a crew. And once that crew generates the poem, then we come down and we save the poem, which is denoted by, you know, it's kind of like the darker gray. That's just a regular function where we save the poem. And even though this is simple, this is a great way to see without even knowing what I did, you know what's happening with my whole crew AI flow. Thank you so much for following along in this eight day series. If you missed any of the previous days, they are in the description below. This wraps it up and I just want to say thank you for sticking around and watching all of these. All the code is also in the description in my GitHub. In the meantime, here are some more videos for you to watch and I will see you next one.